G'day guys, how's it going? It is Jared HD here. Welcome to season number eight. I'm running out of bloody fingers, but episode number eight of season one of the Everton Career Mode series. Thank you for the great support you have been showing on the series so far. I apologize for not getting it out daily as I planned, but as I have explained in numerous videos, very, very busy time in my life right now, but in the next few weeks, life will start to slow up and YouTube will start to pick up. Anyways, lads, make sure that you leave a like on today's episode if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you are new around here. We are pushing for 25,000 subscribers before the beginning of June. But let's get into today's press conference. So the first question comes from Adam Howarth, who says, There have been transfer rumors that German giants Bayern Munich are plotting a big money move for Loris Karius to replace Manuel Neuer, who is said to be linked heavily with Real Madrid. What are your thoughts on this rumor? And on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate Karius? So first things first, I am going to just squash this rumor. Karius is not for sale at any price this first season. I have rated him so highly to begin this season. He has been fantastic for us. Out of 10, I would probably give him an 8.5. I'm really happy with the investment. It's kind of funny that he went to Liverpool in real life as well. The Papier Curve says, Rumours has it that the striker, Rogelio Funes Mori, wants to join his twin brother in Everton. Do you think he could be a good addition to the Everton squad? Whilst I feel like he's good, if we got him, he'd be a good addition to the squad. I'm not planning on sending, signing any more strikers for the rest of the season. We have Lukaku, Mbainiang, and Musa Dembele. I am fine with these three strikers. Besides those three strikers, we have Courtney Dufus and Rodriguez and Kone. Strikers are off the table for me. Official GW Skills says, According to Everton FC's official website, the youth academy have been knocking off other big youth academies like Arsenal under 17s and others. How do you react to this? So, my reaction is that I'm very, very happy. Everton are known for having a fantastic youth system, and it's fantastic to see it continuing. And I'm hoping in char when I'm in charge of Everton throughout my time that we can really build up our youth academy. As you can see, or as you, as you have seen, I've already brought in some fantastic youth academy players. And then we've got that goalkeeper who is already being trained up and is already mid-60s at 16 years old. So I'm pretty confident that the youth system of Everton is only going to get stronger with me at the helm. The final question in today's press conference comes from Dylan Tate who says, can you address the rumors that Gerard de la Feu is linked with a return to Spain with Villarreal and Sevilla interested in the player? At the moment, I am not considering selling de la Feu. He has been one of our best players so far this season. He's pretty high up there in the Howard Kendall medal race. So I'm not planning on selling him maybe two, three seasons down the line, but I could really see him being at the club throughout my entire duration as manager. So we will wrap up today's press conference there, fellas. Thank you once again for the fantastic questions. You guys keep delivering the goods. Make sure that you leave some more questions down below, and I'll try to answer the best ones again next episode. But let's get into the gameplay. All right, lads. So as we jump into the opening game of today's episode, we have a tough trip here. Traveling to St. James's Park, taking on Newcastle United. Sitting right now where they finished in real life, 18th position. They're looking to turn around their season. We are looking to improve on the start we have made it so far. We've been in decent form lately. Of course, the last matchup in the last episode was a 4-0 trouncing of in real life winners Leicester City. So if we can carry on with that momentum, then who knows how far we can go. But Newcastle got the opening opportunity. Townsend punched away from Karius. It goes to Niang here, but Haidara wins it. Chanson Bemba, a lot of space. Belts that one off the post. And unfortunately, freaking CM De Jong of all players in the right place at the right time to collect the scraps and give the Magpies a 1-0 lead here. Not happy about that. Not much Karius could have done. He was a freaking duck left 
with no hope. I don't even know what I meant to say there. But anyways, we get an opportunity. Aaron Lennon almost equalizing with an absolute belter of a strike. Would have been fantastic to score that one there. We get another opportunity cleverly. He's looking for someone. Goes to Barkley, threading the ball through to Morales, who I thought was offside. But Kevin Morales belts that one first time off the left foot. What a fantastic finish there from the freaking Belge left midfielder. Very, very pleased with that. We get another opportunity. And Viney Yang scoring the goal, proving why he is a player for the future, why he could be one of the best signings in this first season. What a freaking goal from Mbani Yang, giving us the lead here against Newcastle. Absolutely over the moon with that one. That was a fantastic strike. Moving into the second half though, Mbemba, Dumbia, what a save from Karius, keeping us in the lead here. Oh God, we should be all tied up here, but that is just a hell of a save. It goes back to Genie Wijnaldum. He belts that one over the crossbar. Thank the Lord for that. As we push on, it is late in this game. Musa Sissoko, he is running up the line, looking to get Newcastle all tied up. And Bemba, Dumbia off the post. Are you kidding me? The most unlucky of deflections. It rebounds off the post into the back of Seamus Coleman. Dumbia celebrating, and it is a two-all score. As we look here, Seamus Coleman, not quite sure what he was doing. He forces us to drop the points. A two-all draw at St. James's Park against Newcastle United. So we will now move into the Howard Kendall medal points for today's episode. After the game against Newcastle, we have decided to award the points to... Three points to Mohamed Bezic. Two points to the German sensation Karius. And one point to Kevin Morales. Jumping back into the gameplay, we have our first home game for today's episode at Goodison Park. We are taking on the Potters. Stoke City, who are sitting in 16th position. We are still in mid-table, 12th place. Looking to get three points here. Move further up the table, like 11th or 10th. Every game is important for us. We're over halfway through the season, which I did not expect. Anyways, here is the Stoke City lineup. A few decent players. Jack Butlin in goal. Glenn Johnson. Um, Hunt Mutt. The freaking Duf. I can't even remember what his name is now. I know it a hundred times. hundred days of the week. I don't even know what I'm saying. You'd think I'm on drugs or something. But 10 minutes into this game. Romelu Lukaku going to James McCarthy. He turns the defender. Belts that one. And James McCarthy. Really should have given us the 1-0 lead there. Would have been a belter of a goal. But we should be in the lead. As we move on here, it is the 40th minute. A great ball from Barry through to Delafeu. Gerard Delafeu scoring an absolute sublime goal. What a finish, but you got to freaking look at the pass. What a finish. What a freaking pass from Gareth Barry. Totally so. He goes to Barry, but that is just fantastic vision there. And a pretty easy finish to make it 1-0. As we move into the second half, Barry looking once again for a goal. Goes to Lukaku. Lukaku hits it, gets blocked from Barkley. Lukaku gets up, hits it again, but unfortunately hits it straight into the hands of Jack Butlin. As we move into the 83rd minute, Kakuta Mane passing that one, gets blocked. It goes back to him. He builds it from distance. Kakuta Mane looking to score an absolute worldie of a goal there. Moving on late into the game, looking to score a second goal to secure the points. Kakuta Mane once again on the attack. He's cutting around, going himself, hits it. Kakuta Mane almost scoring a freaking fantastic goal. It does not matter, however, three important competition points as we defeat Stoke City at home 1-0. Fantastic stuff. After that clash against Stoke City, the points for the Howard Kendall medal are going to... Three points to James McCarthy, two points for Gerard De La Feu, and one point to Kakuta Mane. As we move on now, we have our first training session of today's episode. Baker and Karius both in there, but Toliso and Niang both growing in overall, which is fantastic to see. The lads are growing fantastically. And as we move into the January transfer window, Aruna Kone is the first player on the chopping block. West Ham United coming in. 2.9 million pounds. We counter off for his value of 3.4 million pounds. If they want to pay that, they can have him. But anyways, as we push on here, it is the opening game of our FA Cup campaign. Taking on Barnsley FC, who have been relegated down to League 1 in real life. 
Not sure how they went this season, but still, it should be an interesting game. Going to be a tough game, but we are rocking a fair bit of a rotational side. Still some pretty strong players. Moussa Dembele, I think it's his first start for the club, which I'm very excited to see how the French striker can perform. We move on here. Barnsley getting the opening attack. They build that one from distance. Tim Howard, the American veteran, making the crucial save, though. Moving into the second half after a very boring first half. Dembele going to Grant. It goes back. He intercepts it. Connor Grant lining that one up. Are you kidding me? What a goal from Connor Grant. The youngster giving us the 1-0 advantage here in the 48th minute. That is absolutely fantastic. It just falls to him. He makes the most of the opportunity. Very happy with that one. And we're very lucky there. Tyus Browning getting a deflection, keeping it at a 1-0 scoreline. And off the corner, Kakuta Mane straight to Brownhill. Winnell hits it, and Tim Howard coming up in the clutch, once again making a very important save. As we move on with 20 minutes remaining, Aaron Lennon play that one over the top. Musa Dembele hits it on the half volley. Fantastic save from Davies. Maybe he should have brought it down with the chest. Maybe he should have taken it a little bit closer, but we still have the lead. Funes Mori heading that one back to Grant. Grant unfortunately passes it straight into the path of the Barnsley player. Another fantastic save from Tim Howard as Tyus Browning clears it away. Tim Howard definitely been one of our standout players in this game today. Can he save us once again? Really lucky there as Fletcher doesn't get proper contact with it. And we are moving on into the next round of the FA Cup. Rather luckily, I should say, a 1-0 win away against Barnsley. After our opening FA Cup game against Barnsley, we are awarding the Howard Kendall medal points to three points to Funes Mori, two points to Tim Howard, and one point to Conor Grant. Another training session here. Baker and Karius getting trained once again. Let's see if some players can grow in overall. Baker going up to a 65. Fantastic growth there for a 16-year-old goalkeeper. The future of England right there. A transfer offer comes in here for Corentin Tolisso. Werder Bremen of the Bundesliga. Want our French midfielder. He is going nowhere, however. I want to keep him for a long time. However, a player that is not going to be here for a long time looks like a Bruno Kone is moving to West Ham United. They do accept the 3.4 million pound counter offer. So, not too worried about that. As I said in the press conference, we have striker overload. We have Dembele. We have Lukaku. We have Niang. We have Doofus. I'm not worried at all about losing a Runa Kone. Anyways, the final matchup in today's episode, fellas, it is at home. We have the side that knocked us out of the Capital One Cup in the quarterfinals. It is Spurs. They are taking us on, rocking a pretty strong side. Harry Kane up front, the Golden Boot winner in real life. Jan Vertonghen and Kieran Wimmer. Wimmer, they are playing centre-backs. Kyle Walker running up the line here early in this game. Eight minutes in their purple kit. He's running in, getting past Jack Yelka with ease. Passing that one to Eric Lemayer. Karius making the save at the near post. As we push on, 32nd minute, Eric Lemayer going to Christian Eriksen, who whips that one in there. Not much Karius could have done there. He was stranded. Freaking Harry Kane, though. What a finish. What a ball, but where was our defense? I can't even remember who's playing centre-back besides Jack Yelka, but... They did a horrible job in losing Harry Kane. They're not happy about that at all. As we move in here, Barkley denied. Could have equalized that one there, but Hugo Lloris pulling up the clutch. A fantastic save. Moving into the second half, however, Eric Dier is on the ball. The England international looking for some support. Pass that one to Ericsson. Good save from Jags, but Dier gets straight again. Ericsson, Dembele. Dembele hits it. Good save from Carrius. Cleared away from Tolisso. They get another attack. It's been really all Spurs so far. Dembele, he's looking to get past our defense. We're over freaking rushing, and you can't do shit about that one. I'm not even kidding. Harry Kane, what a freak, man. What can you expect us to do with that? We're jockeying, we're marking. He hits that one, not even in the right real position. He's out of, he's out of position. He's off balance, weird body positioning, and Spurs take the 2-0 lead. Not happy about that. 2-0, and that's the way it's going to end. A pretty poor performance all around from the lads. Not very happy with that, and we need to take a good long look at ourselves. And you know what, lads? After that game against Spurs, nobody is getting the Howard Kendall medal points. That was absolutely atrocious.
All right, lads. So since we were about halfway through the season, a lot of you guys have asked me to give a bit of a tally update on how the Howard Kendall medal standings are looking. So halfway through the season, this is going to be the only look you get until the awards ceremony at the end of the season. Currently in first place on 24 points, we have Karius. Second position on 17 points is Ross Barkley. Third place with 11 points is Gerard Delafayu. Equal fourth on nine points, Romelu Lukaku and Kevin Moralash. And then equal fifth on eight points, Mohamed Bezic and Funes Mori. So it should be interesting to see how it shapes up in the back end of the season. Karius running away with it so far. Can anybody catch him? You'll have to wait and see. Anyways, fellas, we will conclude today's episode here. If you enjoyed the eighth episode of season one of the Everton Career Mode series, don't forget to drop a like on the video. It really helps me out. Leave a comment down below for me to respond to. Subscribe to the channel if you are new around here, of course. But most importantly, fellas, I hope you have a fantastic day. It has been Jared HD here. I'm out. Peace.